This second challenge is called preprocessor solution. In this challenge, we're going to receive some codes. It looks like what you see here in the red section of my code editor. Um, so we have a function, then we have things like minimum. So this is not something that comes with C++. There is no such keyword as function all in capital like this. And also um, this minimum, maximum, for instance, it's not defined anywhere. So we have to define that. Same thing for this here, for each, it's not something that is available in C++ and also for IO. Here actually in the code, they are trying to get some user inputs for an element inside a vector. And then we have some things like INF here, positive INF and negative INF. We have minimum and maximum here as functions. And we also have two str here as a function. So we need to write some preprocessor directives for all of these. And if I scroll up here, you can see that in the program, they have if none of these is defined. So to str, io, function, and inf, then they're going to throw an error. And this is the end of that condition with end if. So clearly they've omitted some stuff like for each or minimum. This I think is just to confuse you when you are solving this challenge. I have to admit that this is a confusing problem. I think it all gets much easier when you really understand what are preprocessor directives and how you should define the macros. So here, for instance, they have defined identifier replacements, and this is from C++.com. So if I give you an example, let's say in your program, you have this defined with the hash sign, and then you have this identifier here, which is INF, and this replacements, this is 10 million. So anytime in your program that you write something like this, let's say val is a valid, um, a valid variable. So whenever you write, if val is equal to INF, the preprocessor is going to resolve that to this here. So if val is equal to 10 million, you can see that INF here was replaced with 10 million. So that's why we need to define preprocessor macros. And this here, whatever you have as the identifier is going to get replaced with the value that you have here. So back to our solution, this is how we can solve it. Whenever in the program they say to str, and then they have an argument here, we can simply convert that argument to a string. And if you want to convert something to a string, when you write preprocessor directives, you can use the hash sign like this. So this here is going to be the same thing as str in between quotation marks. Next up, let's look at this for each statement here. Um, we have two parameters and v here stands for a vector and i is going to be the int variable that we use to loop through our vector. So here I have for i equals zero, i is less than the size of the vector and at every iteration, increase the value for i. If I scroll down here, they have v here and then i and at every iteration, they are getting user inputs for the elements at position i inside of the vector. So this takes us to the io function now. Whatever is the arguments when we call the io function should receive user input. So I have c in and vec. So vec here stands for the element inside the vector. This here is just a parameter. So I don't need to have exactly whatever they have here. I can have any name and it's still going to work. Now for a function here, we don't actually need it inside the program. This is where they use it. And this is to say that minimum and maximum are two functions, but this is actually not necessary. So I can simply have function A and B as parameters and then nothing. So this is going to be ignored inside the program. Here I have the functions minimum and maximum. They are using them here. So they have a for each loop at some points and then MN and MX are supposed to get the minimum and maximum values at every iteration between their current values and the value for the elements at index i inside of the vector. So this is for this for loop. And then after that, they are going to subtract mn from mx and store it in the ants variable here. So the minimum function here is supposed to store whatever is the minimum between a and b inside of a. So this is how I'm implementing that. I'm using a ternary operator and I'm saying if a is less than b, then A should maintain its value because A here is the minimum. Otherwise, A should get the value of B. And I'm using a reverse logic here for my maximum function. And then for INF, I'm defining that as zero. I'm now going to run this code. And we've passed the sample test case. So now I'm going to submit it. And we've passed all the test cases. So that's it guys for this hacker rank challenge. It was called preprocessor solution. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.